Welcome to the Nurtured Nerds Epic Podcast. Come join us and get cuddly, get gamey, get nerdy. And get nurtured. (laughs) Welcome. Welcome, everybody. We're grateful to have you here. Uh, This is the podcast where wellness meets nerdiness to level us up. Uh, We level up with real life connections and adventures on this episode, episode number 34. We're very excited to celebrate that. We're hoping, um, we're hopping, excuse me, into a time machine and nerding out on all things 1980s, which is my favorite decade. Um, And we are doing that with these wonderful folks from a famous video about 7-Eleven near Disney World. It is a, a very infamous video, if you will. Uh, We will also talk about what's going on with our community, which is free to join. So please reach out with a comment, with an email. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and a magic star might pop out of it. (laughs) (laughs) And so first, what we're going to do is just kind of introduce ourselves, uh, get to know one another. We're going to share either something we're drinking, if we have something fun we want to share, or just sort of mention, hey, our name, where we're from, uh, and something that we feel comfortable or excited to share. And, and I'll begin and then we'll move along to our wonderful guests and amazing co host today. Um, my name's Crystal. I am a professional cuddler here located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm grateful to say I've been doing this work almost seven years now, both group events and one on one. I've trained with Cuddle Up to Me, Cuddle Party, Cuddleist, and I'm studying psychology at the University of Pittsburgh. I hear a motorcycle in the background. And today I'm drinking a very magical drink out of a jar. It is called a shrub. It is like the coolest fad right now. You put apple cider vinegar, some weird juices, you ferment them, it's supposed to be good for you. Don't know, <laughs> but we're trying it. So I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. And Bethany, would you like to introduce yourself? I would love to hear from you. Hi, I am Bethany. I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania also. I don't have... Um quite the accomplishments that Crystal has, but I do have a big goal, Slurpee, which is perfect, in honor of this visit or this video. Um, and I have water to mute the um, sugar coma that is in that cup. So, so that's what smart I'm choice. I, I very much agree. Smart choice to like balance it out a little bit. And thank you, Bethany. Thank you for being here. And we're going to move on to our amazing folks, the creators, and and at least one person that was kind of just jumping into the video. Um, We've got Chris. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you might be drinking today. Uh, I I wasn't prepared for a drink, but uh, if I had to choose, I would choose an orange Slurpee. The orange. Orange. Yes, but uh, I I am... uh, my name's Chris. Uh, back in 1987 or around there, I acquired my first home video camera. I was working at Disney World at the time, and I just, uh, like the Goldbergs TV show, I just carried that camera around and did funny interviews, funny things, uh, put my friends on camera. I, sometimes my friends grabbed the camera and did their own things. And uh, one night in particular, in the summer of 87, um, we... Uh, a group of friends just went out and we went to a party and afterwards we just kind of thought it would be funny to interview people at a 7-Eleven and that that stayed on a VHS tape in my private collection for many years I shared it with a couple other people uh but it was always one of my favorite funny moments mainly because of my friend Ken who you'll meet in just a second and his quick wit and the improv skills uh but he always made me laugh and so I I did do that but then came digital uh digitizing videos and uh sometime in the 2000s i decided to digitize my vhs collection and around that time youtube was starting up so i just started uploading a lot of my old favorite home videos so other people that were in them could see them and then uh eventually uh somebody random found this one little 7-eleven video and uh started sharing it on reddit and all these other things and that, that it exploded and now we have close to 8 million views and it wasn't really, uh, people weren't really finding it uh, as amusing as I did because of Ken's humor. It was mainly because it was an 80s time capsule. And mm-hmm. uh, and people liked seeing all the differences between then and today. So that's 
It was, but we, it's still, it's still going strong. We get one strong spurt about every year of people checking out the video and uh, introduced to younger generations. And it's kind of cool. So that's, uh, that's my connection to the subject today. Uh, I was the owner of the camera, even though I wasn't the one doing most of the talking this time around, but uh, I was there and that was a fun night. It really looked like a fun and adventurous evening. I really, you know, loved the fact that it was very impromptu and very real, very authentic. You know, the people there were reacting and, and everyone did seem in a really good mood. You know, that's something we, we will talk about a little bit later. Um, Ken, Ken, would you care to introduce yourself? And of course, Chris, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Let me check in real quick. Did you have a drink you wanted to, well, you said orange Slurpee, that's right. I, I don't have one with me, but uh, I was just kind of playing because that's, when the video opens up, I'm trying to decide which Slurpee to get, and uh, yes. I chose orange. <laughs> it's a classic choice. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Ken, and uh, I was the person behind the video camera and babbling all those jokes. Years and later now, I look back and I think of all these really great jokes I could have made, but I didn't make at the moment. So that's... Uh, a little bit frustrating these days, but I'm going to get over it. Um, I am not drinking anything. I did not realize that I could have chosen a beverage. Basically, I, I'm a teacher. I teach at home, and I drink water all day long, seltzer water. Uh, but I, I do actually drank an orange-flavored seltzer water earlier today, so maybe this is a, a, a theme. Since this is Florida, that's where we are, and uh, it used to be known for orange groves. Now, I don't know if you could find an orange grove if you search for, for, for days. Oh. Um, I have uh, been teaching school for 31 years, and I've been writing plays that are performed all over the world. And when I think about the impact that I've had on the universe, it is basically eight minutes of making jokes behind a camera at a 7-Eleven. That'll be my my lasting impact, but I'm proud of it, and, uh, and I, I claim it, and uh, I don't regret it at all. Well, Ken, it's a pleasure to meet you, and they do say laughter is the best medicine. You know, I feel that you know, we we strive for so many beautiful, great things, and surprisingly, some of our our, our smallest acts or the deeds that we don't think are going to impact people end up impacting the most people. So I, I really can feel that vibe, and I appreciate your share and welcome. We're glad to have you. And of course, we're excited to have you, Jake. And I, you know, I want to ask also. I know we're looking at introductions, but I I want to honor that you kind of came on into this. This was a this was a kind of magic moment of just, hey, I'm randomly here. It wasn't necessarily planned. You weren't friends with Chris or Ken prior to this event. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I was just looking for some toothpaste on our way home to our apartment. Uh, and my Juice girlfriend, bars? Catherine, what's that? Juice bars. Juice <laughs> bars, that's right. Yeah. She is looking for ju toothpaste. And Ken said, juice bars? Uh, no, it's French for... <laughs> Toothpaste. Um, yeah, we just, we we also were going down the street. We passed Hut Pizza. She always got everything backwards. And we ran over a armadillo, which we called a pizza road instead of a road pizza. So she got her, uh, her adjectives and her verbs uh, kind of mixed up. So we were looking for toothpaste because, well, we were uh, sharing an apartment across the street from the 7-Eleven and we needed some. We were on a date. We were out dancing. And um, she had been my girlfriend for about a year. We both worked at Epcot. We met I worked in Future World, and uh, she worked at the World Showcase in the French Pavilion. She was one of the international students there. I was uh, I started for three months and extended my my Disney College program for another year. And she was there for a twenty four I'm sorry a twelve month contract. And her contract was coming up, and so we were wondering what we were going to do. And on the way in, um, the re the rear view mirror of my car fell off, and I said, "Whatever you do." don't lose this little screw in there. Cause she was like, Oh, this is funny. And she started to sing into it and so on. And I go, whatever you do, just don't lose that little screw. Cause I got to put it back up tomorrow when I can see something. And that's why she walked in with the, with the mirror hanging from her chin. I think Ken said, you know, we're going to have to get that mirror surgically removed from your chin. And she's like, her English wasn't that great. She, so you lost her on a lot of that stuff. She's like, Oh yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. So yeah. she didn't want to let you get one up. People, people yeah. get What's, lost yeah. in the even if they do understand the language. So, yeah. So uh, I'm glad to be part of it. It was it was a it was a hoot. Uh, my kids, I have three teenagers, and they roll their eyes every time I I look at this, and 
they go, we've seen it. We've seen it. We know, you know, so. <laughs> so that's a little, oh, and what I do for a living, I'm a, I worked at Disney for 18 years. Um, I taught training and development. I opened up Disney Vacation Club, their version of Timeshare. Um, I worked at Disney University teaching new employee rotation. And I, and I taught a lot of the business programs to outsiders who came to Disney. And we started something called the Disney Institute. So we sold our secrets to the world. And I fell in love with healthcare. And so on 9-11, when the second plane hit the Twin Towers, I was actually working at a hospital in Palm Springs on behalf of Disney when I knew we were going to have to close down Disney for a while and lay off employees. And I said, nah, 18 years is enough. And I, I faxed in my resignation from the hotel. And so I started my own company. And now I'm a professional speaker. I travel all over the world and I teach other companies the Disney approach. And I specialize in, in medicine, doctor, patient relations, hospitals, clinics, and so on. So that's what I do now. And it all started at the 7-Eleven because some guy had a, a, too much sugar and needed my help in his dental program. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> they ate it all in one place. And the Swiss cheese is better uh, when you have the milk on your Pop-Tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, milk runs. Ken, you were on fire that night. I, I got to tell you, every time I watch that video, I just crack up. Yeah, a lot of comedy gold in there. And, and thank you so much, Jake. All of that sounds really rewarding. And, and what, a, what a journey, what an adventure. Definitely, we're really grateful to have you guys here. That's pleasure. Fun. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew back then that this would be, uh, people would be uh, talking to us about it all yeah. these years my wife, later. My wife still doesn't understand the appeal of the video. And I told her, like, yeah, we hit 2 million views. She's like, what? And now I tell her almost to 8 million. And she, she she doesn't understand, like, why does anybody want to watch that? She saw it once. She was good. She doesn't need to see it again. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she doesn't understand it. Uh, but it, it is funny. Every once in a while, I'll meet somebody, and that'll that'll come up, and they'll think, wait, that's that's you in that video? I've seen that video. Because I'm, I'm hidden, except for when Jake held the uh, review mirror up for a, the shining moment of my uh, video career. But it, it's funny to meet someone who has who knows me for decades, but has never known that that's us, you know, me in that video. So that's pretty neat. I've had that same experience. Uh, I, I currently I'm a restaurant owner, and some of my staff uh, found out later that that I just watched that the other day. I didn't know that was you. So well, I'm bald now and had lots of hair then, and I go through stages of gaining weight. And so I was like, I could tell why you didn't recognize me, but it's the same voice. Same for Ken too. So <laughs> definitely, definitely similar voices. I can tell from the the remake video or the the second round, 2014. Yeah. Mm. Chris used to walk around with an orange Slurpee at all times, trying to get attention. <laughs> uh, that was his like secret uh, guerrilla marketing for the video, just walking around with the orange Slurpee, so someone could say, <laughs> "Oh, I, I I saw a video about that." He's like, "That's me." <laughs> I believe Catherine still carries the the rearview mirror, and Jake still pops the collar. Um, I used to carry a video camera in front of my face, but it just got too heavy and I'm no longer as, you know, fit as I used to be. So I had to, I had to ditch that. And, Jay, uh, and Ken still shakes people's hands with the other hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chris, are you still, you know, making videos currently? I, I know that you posted some videos of yourself uh, interviewing people at Epcot and uh, that was kind of, the start of all of this and what would you, I guess, would you say that, you know, there was a lot of influence from Disney and how would you say that it's affected, you know, how you create nowadays, you mentioned restaurant owning, you know, how has that kind of panned into your career? Well, before the restaurant, which was, has only been the last few years, I, and at the time I, that this video was made, I was going to university of central Florida, UCF. And my major was television production. So that was one of the reasons why I liked the video cameras and that, having that. So uh, after I graduated, um, the studios were opening up. So I tried a little to get into TV business there at the studio and ended up working at a local TV station in Orlando. And then it kind of started bouncing around the country to different local TV stations, working my way up in management. And uh, I was kind of a marketing director. I, we came up with ad campaigns. And so I, I was always had my hand on some type of video camera doing things like that, but not so much anymore. Uh, but uh, I always loved the business. I, I, I probably I would love to still get back and do more videos. And 
Um, I, I've made videos of my restaurant and things like that. So it, they're still out there and I still dabble in that. It's still kind of one of my old passions. And because of this viral video, my YouTube channel has like 40,000 followers and I don't know what to do with all these followers. I feel like Ken and I should go around and do interviews all the time and do funny things, but I don't, I have a, I don't know what the subject would be, or we'd fall flat or something like that. Well, we've we've been have... waiting for 7-Eleven to, you know, offer us a, a deal, <laughs> you know, to visit every 7-Eleven in the country and other countries, uh, or as Captain <laughs> would say, 11 sevens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so if 7-Eleven, if you're catching this uh, YouTube video, we're open for a, a contract. Well, we're there. Chris and I can travel the world and, try out the different flavored Slurpees and interview the uh, people at two o'clock in the morning. And we'll, we'll probably be beat up in the first week and retire, but Hey, you know, but, uh, my, my money's, I... my money's on. You're going to be in jail in the first episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to be recorded. They're on the witness uh, protection but, program. But Ken will have them laughing. <laughs> it is pretty funny uh, that those people who thought maybe we'll end up in a, VHS tape in somebody's garage are now, you know, being viewed by 8 million people across the world. So uh, we yeah. often know what some of those people are. I was going to say, well, we know that, Jake, you've kept in touch with Catherine, um, the French girl you that you were dating. Um, has anybody else been like continued to be in touch with? I'm not sure if I remember or recall. I have uh, been in touch with at least a couple others from the video. Um, yeah. In the in the in the video, if you watch it, uh, right when we start, I'm getting the slurpee, and then we pan over, and there's the night manager with yeah. a girl that's in a yellow top, and she starts dancing in front of the. She wasn't she dancing. Had... She was just <laughs> shaking in front of the frozen foods, staying warm. <laughs> exactly. That's right. But uh, she. Um, she actually was an employee of that 7-Eleven. She just wasn't working at the time. I found out okay. later. And she currently still works for 7-Eleven, just not that location. She works closer to Universal Studios right now. She did reach out to me, and she has her own YouTube channel that she uploads videos of her dogs to. And it's her voice, and I see her, and that's her. And she reached out, and she said, oh, my manager showed this to me. How, how funny. And that's about the mu as much conversation as I could get out of her. And I've actually driven by there a couple of times to see if she's there, see if we can get her to do some of this stuff. But uh, I don't really think she's too interested. She just thought it was funny. and But she she did reach out, and it was her. That one was confirmed. A couple other contacts I've heard, possibilities. Uh, somebody told me that the cashier lady recently retired from another Orlando 7-Eleven, uh, but not not that one. Uh, so we're trying to track – I was trying to track her down because the owner of that 7-Eleven – Goes, oh, I think she just retired like a month ago. Let me see if I can get a hold of her. Sorry to jump in. She, I played softball three nights a week when I worked at Disney, and there was a 7 Eleven over by the Orlando Ale House on that corner, 535, and uh, whatever that road is there. And she worked there. So she moved from our 7 Eleven. I'll call it ours. Can I call it ours? From our 7 yeah. Eleven. I think so. Yeah. She Thanks moved from our 7 Eleven to the, the one world up. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I, she I moved over there. Right. I saw her a lot. I mean, I didn't put two and two together because years later, this, I didn't even know the video was online. Quite frankly, I, Chris gave me a copy of it on VHS, which I thought was funny. And I sent a copy to Catherine over, over in France, but she couldn't play it because she has a different VHS system there. But yeah, this is what she looks like now. And, uh, She's cool. I talked to her. I, I text her on WhatsApp like once a week. We, we're still friends. Um, but uh, yeah. She's cool. If you, yeah, she's cool. If you, yeah, she has two, two adult kids. One was, uh, one is 24, which was my age in that video. Uh, and the other one's 27. Uh, how do we, Catherine? So I opened up Epcot. Um, in 1982, I was on the Disney college program and then oh, wow. uh, they moved me into this research facility at Epcot called the Epcot outreach teacher center and Epcot outreach research center. 
So if you wanted to know anything about Disney, you would come to us and say, hey, I just saw the French film. Can I get a list of the scenes? Here you go. Hey, I just saw the fireworks. Can you give me a list of all the fireworks? Here you go. Hey, I saw you do the hydroponic growing of plants. Can I do that in my backyard? I go, here's a list of kits. And so I would do the research not only for guests on vacation, I would do the research for Disney executives. So Michael Eisner and Frank Wells would call our office and say, hey, we saw this exhibit in Australia, in Brisbane, this French robot draws people's faces. Next week we had it at Epcot. And so, or we're thinking about buying these TV radio stations in Indiana and I do the research on them and boom. That's and then awesome. we did the research uh, for Spain versus Paris. Madrid won on my, on my research, but we ended up in Paris. So oh, don't blame cool. that on me. Yeah. So yeah, that was, oh, so anyway, while working there, they gave me a three piece suit, which is very hot. So every day after lunch, we would eat at the employee cafeteria called Odyssey restaurant. And I would walk around the 11 countries lagoon. And as I was rounding Morocco, I looked up and at this gift cart outdoors was this beautiful little French girl. Uh, and I said, holy, holy smokes, I got to meet her. I don't know French, but I'll try. And um, the rest is history. Is it, we awesome. kind of so we we were out on a date that night, even though I'm in white shorts, we were at the Laughing Cougar Lounge dancing, of all things. And uh, we were on our way home. We needed to get toothpaste. We had. We had an apartment um, together. No, and, uh, you need after to get that video, bars? I ran into uh, Jake and Catherine at the employee cafeteria, and uh, I, 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 a couple times. And I think after Catherine had gone back to France, um, I ran into Jake again, and he asked me to get him a VHS copy of the Seven Eleven video. I so still I have it. So he could, it's got masking tape on it. it. Look like he yeah. wrote it with lipstick. It's like seven dash <laughs> eleven, <laughs> and. Uh, we just run into each other every once in a while. And uh, then I went over to start working at the other park, uh, MGM Studios at the time. But I still think we have a lot of mutual friends that worked. Uh, we never worked directly with each other, but we ran into each other a lot and had a lot of mutual yeah. friends. So. This is what Catherine looked like when I met her. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I, I didn't have any pictures ready. Yeah, I, I'm horribly <laughs> under underprepared. This is what she looked like at the French people. She worked at the outdoor cart on the water in front of France. And I was oh, there on my day off. Nice. There I am with the white shorts, shorts again. again and the collars yeah. up. Oh my God. What is with me? Um, I can't, the, the one guy that was with me and Ken, his name was Jim and he worked with me, but I can't remember his last name. And everybody asked me what happened to the third guy. And I, I, I lost track. I mean, we didn't have emails or anything like that back then. Mm -hmm. We actually had to have their phone number or, or um, their address so you could snail mail them stuff. And I, I, I have no idea where he went to or after that. And I'm surprised I haven't heard from him because I remember him being a pretty nice guy, but uh, uh, I don't know why I haven't heard from him. And if anybody recognizes him, I wouldn't mind trying to get a hold of him because I'm sure he's seen the video in some form or another. He, he looks very familiar. I think he worked at a bell as a bellman at the Royal Plaza where I also, I was a bartender at the giraffe lounge uh, after hour after Disney hours, I try to make some extra money. I think he worked there too. He might have. I don't know. I think I remember him going over to Pirates of the Caribbean but, uh, too. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he was just doing some overtime shifts over there. But other than that, I did hear, uh, and this is not a hundred percent accurate or I mean uh, verified. But the the guys buy the buying the sugar. I think Jake, you said you thought he worked in Morocco. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I had that guy's grandson contact me, and he said that was his dad and his granddad, and uh -huh. they would visit visit him all the time in Orlando, and they remember them both going out to go pick up some things because they just got to Orlando, and they go, oh, we need to do some stuff. We're going to bake some stuff in the morning and do some of our usual dishes. So they ran out to get that. They didn't know that they were interviewed for a video camera. And he just stumbled on this. And he goes, both my dad and my granddad have passed on. And this was amazing oh. for me to find this. And he shared it with his mom who started crying and stuff like that. So oh. I don't, not a hundred percent that that's true, but it sounded pretty, you know, detailed. It's and, a great story, whether it's real or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm like going to say it's real. So, so I did. Anytime, anytime. Remember that guy? <laughs> He was such a nice guy. But uh don't know about the cheese Danish guy or the uh or anybody else. I haven't really heard from most of the others, so 
or the one guy who looked like he might want to punch us right at the very end, which was our cue to kind of wrap things up. That, that last <laughs> guy wasn't a, wasn't oh. there was, the one person who didn't really smile. So uh, he had the tank top on. Like, what do you guys want? <laughs> Back off. <laughs> Sucker. Well, you guys were driving the Scooby Doo murder van too, so I mean yeah, that yeah. didn't help. We get teased about that a lot too. That was my actually my parents' family vacation van, and my my car was in the shop, so I borrowed it that night. <laughs> but, it seems most gonna... of the people you interviewed were pretty positive about being interviewed. I think it was a reflection of where we were in the, the 80s. I mean, no one was, nobody was worried about this being seen by the world. So they were just kind of relaxed. And I guess it was late at night and yes, it's Disney, but I think it's just the people's attitudes were just friendly back in those days. And nowadays when people look at it, they say, everybody must be high, everybody must be drunk, everybody <laughs> and it was on drugs. And, you know, people just like to have fun. I mean, we were, we were laughing and smiling and, you know, I, I don't remember if there was anybody we steered away from that we were worried about, but Back in those days, I don't think we ever, you know, you didn't go into a 7-Eleven worried about being, uh, you know, beat up or mugged or having a robbery. You just went in there to, you know, hoping the slurping machine worked. And, uh, you know, maybe there was a, a sale on the, the big gulp. That's what you worried about. So it was just a, it was a nice time. And uh, I think that's why people connect with the video these days. The video really took off in 2020 when everybody was, you know, sequestered in their homes and couldn't go out. I think people were visiting the 7-Eleven through our video and seeing, you know, what the world was like when everybody was locked in their house wearing a mask. So that's really what gave the, the video such a good boost. Yeah, and I, I think that there's a lot of factors on why we were all so friendly and everybody was so willing to talk. But it was two in the morning. People were wrapping up their fun nights. Uh, it was right across from the, the Disney uh, uh, apartment complex where a lot of them were housed. So uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing most of the customers that walked in there we're also Disney employees, and we are we're all trained to be nice to people all the time, and we all we all had that Disney look. So it's 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 not hard to fathom that you know we're all just being nice to it. We all just got off work, or we all just finished our parties, and we're kind of in a good mood. But uh, I, I think if you went to another part of Orlando that same night, it might have been a different story. But but I think the fact that it was near this place where a lot of Disney employees worked was it was one of the big factors. But Maybe because it's part of the 80s and we were all friendly to each other. Maybe it's because it's near a theme park. I don't know. But uh, I, I think, yeah, go ahead, Jay. I would agree. I, I have this philosophy because there was a Perkins that my girlfriend and I frequented in Lake Buena Vista, which is right adjacent to the Disney property. And it was the best customer service ever. And I've been to a lot of other Perkins restaurants in the United States, and I've never gotten that level of service. So I call this the Disney halo effect, right? So a lot of those employees, like the guy from Morocco and his son, they had just gotten off. They just closed the restaurant, right? At, in August of 1987, the park didn't close until like midnight, right? And then you got to clean up the restaurant, and then you got to come home, and they're swinging in 7-Eleven at 2.30 in the morning, get sugar, right? Tea times, anytime, you know, and that's that, that Disney attitude. So I think Disney did a really good job, at least in the eighties, selecting the right fit talent. And I'm not going to give them all the credit. Clearly there was some people in there who are, who are having some libations and, and other things before they came into the 7-Eleven. But for the most part, I agree with you, Ken, that I think the attitude of that generation was, was a lot more friendlier. People were less guarded about being recorded or being put on the internet or who are you guys and you guys were just so genuinely, you weren't intoxicated. You were kind of nice. You were just happy, go lucky. And it made the rest of us who visited there like, oh, these guys are cool. You know, except that one guy thought, what television station are you with? But I, I do think <laughs> Disney gets a little bit of credit because a lot of the employees who, who worked at Disney lived in that apartment complex. I lived at it right across the street. A lot of us swung in there on their way home from work or on the way to work to get our, our, our pick me up for the day. So, um, I think that I think that is a little bit of it. Yeah, I think yeah. those are all fascinating points. I, I really think that connection is something we really touch on a lot here with Nurtured Nerds, uh, and and trying to kind of analyze, um, you know, how human interaction compared back then to now, how it would feel to walk into a Seven Eleven today versus when you did. And I do think you know some of the big standouts do include that Disney culture. 
but also just the free spirit of the 80s in Florida at 2.30, you know, and, and I think those are all, those are all really valid points. I think um, something that comes up for me also is that, you know, Disney does have, I believe, a halo effect. I used to really struggle with honoring Disney uh, for years. And then I went there again and I was like, wow, no, like they, they, I'm feeling the authenticity. I'm feeling the customer service. And I've been in customer service many years of my life as well. And I do think that there's something that does seem to stand out and it is contagious in a sense, just like smiling is, is contagious. Um, and so, you know, I, I think people do say that things have, have changed so drastically. You know, you mentioned, you know, after, you know, the, the pandemic and in 2020 is when people were watching this, when we look at, you know, cell phones, social media and, and internet now versus then, you know, do you feel that the impact would, would you say, would you agree with the consensus that it's, you know, having a damaging effect on connection um, as a pair, as composed, excuse me, as compared to what you guys did, which I actually think fostered some connection that night at 2.30 in the morning. Well, yeah, I, I, I definitely, so. yeah. And whoever oh, wants go ahead. to. Go ahead, Chris. I, was gonna, I, I definitely think that today's culture uh, it does steer away because there's so many TikTokers out there making videos that are where they're pulling pranks on you don't know where, where it's going to end up so there's there is a lot of like you know I didn't give permission type of talk out there and yep. people are a little bit more stand guardy ish uh so that was a, a factor in the 80s where people didn't have to worry about it. they didn't know what I was going to do with this video or maybe I was with a tv station or it would it would no one would see it again but there it was a a fun time like uh, America's Funniest Home Videos had just become popular on TV. So people were, were thinking maybe I'll end up on something like that. And uh, it, it was a fun thing. But yeah, you a lot of the comments, if you read the, the video comments, people are saying uh, that they would be afraid to go out and talk to people. There, there were outgoing people where it seemed more of the norm for us back then. But it, you don't see people talking to each other. They don't have those social skills anymore because everybody's buried in their phone and not doing the one-on-one -on -one in person interaction that kind of trained us to to be able to do that back in the 80s. They don't have that training anymore because a lot of it's through uh, a, a screen now instead of a face to face. So I think that that's why we we are a little bit more re, uh, willing to talk to each other back then. I don't think. I ever lost that, you know, desire. When I'm in public, I always try to have conversations with people, but that's our generation. Yeah, um, you have that skill because of, yeah, you didn't yeah. you didn't grow up that way. But yeah, today's yeah. generation sometimes that's that's what the comments say in the in the video that we don't have those skills basically. Well, I agree. I think Jake mentioned he has teenagers. Chris, you and I have kids that are teenagers that are in their twenties now and they, they're definitely less sociable. I mean they're still friendly and wonderful kids, yeah. but they don't uh, you know, strike up conversations if we're out in public. You know, if I strike up a conversation with a mom or dad in the line somewhere, my son generally won't strike up a conversation with their teenager because they'll be busy looking at their phones or just, you know, thinking, dad, please don't embarrass me. Dad, please don't embarrass me. But uh, we'll, we'll always, uh, you know, until I'm, you know, I'm almost 60 now. And uh, when I get there, I think I'm always going to be the kind of person that strikes up a conversation and tries to make a joke and, you know, keep the atmosphere light, just, uh, if you can't connect with people, what is there in the world, you know? Yeah. It is a different been... generation. I mean, the way we grew up, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of TV and, and we had no computers really. So we played outside and we had to socialize and we had to get in, you know, spats and, and little fights and make up and shake hands and, and kids today, and they don't have that, right. They didn't have that, that, ecosystem that we had growing up so and then disney just exemplified it right they they make sure they had a, a certain look and a certain person they were looking for a lot of gregarious a lot of extroverts they they wanted to make sure extra friendly because people on vacation deserved it and they paid a premium price which is even more today so i think i think all of those factors uh exacerbated the situation that that 7-eleven was like a little as you call it time capsule of that generation of that, of that time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> After all. World. <laughs> but let's not, I don't want to discount this generation because my son is so creative uh, on on uh, his TikTok and then social media. And I know so many young people that are. So there's, there's you know, things that I 
just love about the young generation. Now I'm an old man, but I'm still going to love the uh, the creativity that they have now. And they may have different social skills than we did, or maybe not even skills, just maybe social agendas than we had. Uh, but yeah. my goodness, I'm so impressed by the creativity I see. Uh, I see kids out there. I'm like, if these kids went into a 7-Eleven, their video would be remarkable. So <laughs> I would agree. I, I would agree. By I'm the way, Ken, Ken's son has a, vi a video that's gone viral too, or maybe a couple of them. So he, nice. he's following his dad's footsteps, but uh, nice. It runs in the family. It's a race. He does a couple of TikToks that are slightly above our almost eight million now. So I'm a little jealous of, <laughs> and and I got like a 35 year head start. You know, his were only a couple of years old. So <laughs> well, that's beautiful. I was actually gonna. That was gonna be one of my next uh, questions. Was how and I noticed that when you guys did the remake video in 2014, you had kids kind of present and kind of like a little bit shying away from it. Um, have you have you seen this bring you has this video at all brought you closer to your kids? Have you been able to create together or what has come of that? And of course, anyone can answer. Well, my uh, son was wearing a fedora in the video, which I think he regrets immensely at this point in his life. Uh, but I think he gets a kick out of it that that remake video has got a little over a million, maybe close to two million views. So I think he thinks it's kind of funny, but I don't think he advertises it a lot to his friends. Check me and out my, on my fedora. My, da my daughter is not a, an extrovert in any way. Uh, and she was kind of shy about it. But I think she was happy she participated in it, though. You know, when I mentioned that people are making comments about her in the comment section, she kind of smiles. But uh, uh, she had just cut her hair really short just before that video. But then she grew it out long. She just cut it short again uh, last month. So uh, I I don't know if it's brought us closer together or anything like that, but she, but she, I think she was glad she participated in that. And uh, th there's a lot of comments too, like do it again, do another reunion video. It's been 10 years. Let's see what she looks like. Maybe the kids could take over and start doing what you and their dads did. And they, they could do the video every 10 years together. I don't know if that'll happen, but, uh, <laughs> but I guess Ken's son's, Ken's uh, son is already on the path of doing videos of his own. So. Sounds maybe. like it. <laughs> And remarkably, his account is all about Disney. So it's oh. like a full circle. I would definitely love to check that out if you're open to sharing at some point. It's fake Disney facts. Check them out. Fake Disney facts. Okay. Uh, going back to uh, the, the, your previous question, though, too, uh, I think it, a lot of it was an 80s thing. And if you if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see other videos and like road trips that I went on, some of them with Ken. We went to New Orleans in one road trip and we stopped wow. by random gas stations and interviewed people there. We're talking to people at a Chipley gas station in this little uh, podunk town in uh, Chipley, Florida. And they were all just as friendly. They were welcoming us and laughing at all of our jokes there too. So uh, we, we were spreading joy wherever we went with a video camera doing a little funny interview. So uh, I think it was a common thing around, around the country at that time to be more welcoming to it. We have to credit Chris for never destroying a videotape or throwing anything away. Just his old <laughs> old house just to be stacked. Just I was going to say, you should see his garage. Yeah. yeah. I did haul a lot of boxes around of VHS tapes, and that's why I digitized them, so I didn't have to do that anymore. But uh, but I did hold on to them just because I like keeping the memories, and I thought it was fun to share with people every once in a while. And then I, YouTube came along, and I could, now I can share it with everybody. <laughs> Well, I think we all have gifts and creative ways that we can connect to people. And I, I find it really amazing and, and fascinating to watch and witness, even you know, throughout our conversation right now, you know, those gifts kind of expressing themselves and, and those ways that Disney has brought you together, that video making has brought you together, that humor has brought you together, and even just that authentic random connection and, and even hoarding. Hoarding things has brought you together. It's good, <laughs> exactly. Good stuff. Well, can, I, you, can I say one thing that just because I've I don't know Chris very well. Uh, we're yeah. acquainted, but I I don't know Ken at all. You know what's ironic is that I'm a one of seven kids of a director and producer for CBS oh. Television in Rochester, New York, and I just think that's hilarious that the three of us. And as a young kid, I used to do little commercials when when somebody would call in sick. My dad would go, "Hey, send send Jake down to the TV station. I need a kid for an extra." And I would be in little commercials, just watching racetracks go around the thing. And here we are, the three of us, or the five of us, because sort of that camera kind of has has us all tied together. It just hit me. I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's funny. I didn't know that. One of my uh, old uh, 
TV producers uh, I work with is now in Rochester. So maybe she's working at the same TV station. It's that a small be, world. That would be a yeah. small world after yeah. all. It's a small, yeah, it's a small world. <laughs> I think we do all have to sing it at some point together before we end. <laughs> yeah, we have to have a sing along to close out the show. So <laughs> you um, you collect all the old um, videos. Do you does your garage have a lot of other eighties memorabilia? I I personally kept a lot of stuff from my Disney days. I have like a little archive. I even have some of the, I'm not supposed to, but I have some of the costumes I used to wear at the at the parks, and um, uh, I even have like my orientation folder that I got on my first day of of training, and I nice. had I had to read, and I still have a lot of my old name tags and stuff like that. So, are you pulling some of that stuff out, Jake? Oh, oh look at Love that. It. So yeah, I, I do have, I, I wouldn't call myself a hoarder, but I do have a lot of, I, I do keep a lot of stuff that uh, meant stuff to me back in those days, a lot of 80s stuff, so. Here is my uh, Walt Disney grad night. Uh, seniors in Florida get to go to Disney World as seniors, at least we did back in 1984 when I graduated high school. So I still have my, my Disney cup. And I, I was actually uh, a Walt Disney World dreamer and doer which was an award that came out. It was the first year they ever gave out the award and I was selected from my high school. So um, even though I never worked at Disney, it's always been there. Uh, I was always just outside the halo, but uh, still basking in its glow. I love that. Yeah, I definitely, I had a friend who worked in Disney and gave me a lot of fun facts and just experiences and had a whole wall devoted to like their awards and some of the things that they, the paraphernalia they got and, yeah, just some really cool stories. And after after going back, I, I was actually really wooed by the the magic. I was like, no, this is this is real. I'm I'm an adult and have kids of my own, and now I'm very very re wooed by it. So, good stuff. I did want to ask, um, you know, there's some really some of my favorite movies and music come from the '80s, um, and there have been a lot of interesting. You know, we talked about your video being a time capsule, a really authentic way to you know, kind of take a little glimpse into the 80s. There's been some movies and some entertainment that has tried to, uh, you know, give a more authentic version of the 80s. And I'm personally mentioning and thinking of both Stranger Things and Donnie Darko when I say that. I don't know if you've seen either of these uh, movies or I mean shows both, it's one, one of each. Um, but any, any, I don't know, thoughts on that authentic portrayal of the 80s? Because we also have the opposite version that can be a little bit more, commercialized or maybe one-sided uh and i feel like maybe what do you think of those shows or those attempts at authenticity uh, i haven't seen donnie darker i've seen stranger things and i think yeah. they do a pretty good job of uh making it feel authentic to the 80s and another show out there i've already mentioned is the goldbergs okay i don't know if you've seen that adam goldberg is a real person and he generated that tv show from his home videos doing exactly what i did he was a little bit younger than me at the time, but he had almost the same exact video camera that he kept on his shoulder and he kept all of his videos and his home videos inspired each episode of the Goldberg. So that, I think they did a good job too of capturing kind of what I did there. But Stranger Things, I think is is pretty authentic to the 80s stuff. So It was uh, because during the 80s, we were always chased by alien creatures that came up from, <laughs> I spent a lot of time, a lot of time in the upside down during my senior year of high school. So. <laughs> I agree. I definitely watched a lot of X-Files. And so I feel like maybe I was just, I was already there. <laughs> By the way, just a little plug. Uh, I, I asked Chris before the show started, what is that trophy over his left shoulder? He, he's he got an Emmy, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. Wow. I, that was for one of my ad campaigns at the TV station, but That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So I, I kind of stuck with video uh, and I, I was uh, in the television business for close to 30 years and finally, uh, the streaming services kind of started killing some of the the model of the local TV station that I was that I really enjoyed working. I was I wasn't a big news person. Local news is still going strong, but uh, I I was I was more in the entertainment fun side of it. So I I said well I want to get back to Florida and I bought a little restaurant here. So I've been doing that the last six years, and uh, kind of hanging out doing that. But uh, I I bring some of my old staff members down to help produce videos about the restaurant do things like that. But uh, I'm out of the TV business for now, but you never know. I might still get back into it or might start doing 
some uh, actual vlogs that are utilizing these 40,000 followers I have on my YouTube channel for something. I don't know. Boys. But, uh, <laughs> it's always in your blood. You and Ken are naturals. <laughs> I, love I, just, I just a happenstance. What kind of restaurant is it, Chris? I'm curious. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a re related. Uh, there was at the time near the 7-Eleven, there was a, a Disney hangout called uh, Big Bamboo Lounge, and it was a, a whole hole in the wall tiki bar that was built before Disney World, uh, and uh, we all hung out there because uh, there was another dormitory before Vista Village across from the 7-Eleven that was right next to this place called Snow White's Village. And, I lived uh, in it. My, my, you been there? Yeah, I lived uh, there. Uh, oh, did you? Did you go to Big yeah. Bamboo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bruce was the owner, and we would get our libations from him for our... our this was, The drinking age was younger when I was in college, so Bruce so would sell my, us kegs. My place is a, a tribute to this Big Bamboo Lounge, and it's called Big Bamboo Bayside in Tampa Bay. And uh, uh, there's a couple actual tributes to that original one. We play the same type of music only in the mornings, though. And we have uh, some of the same drinks and do a couple of things. But it's its its own thing, too. But it's got the name and a couple throwbacks uh, to the 80s Big Bamboo. <laughs> but nah. but, uh, but that but it all tied to that same area. So that, that's what I'm doing now. And I sell Mickey Mouse bars. <laughs> at this place too as a tribute to my first job at disney's epcot <laughs> i love that i love yeah. that i think that that nostalgic vibe is very cool and very very strong and you have to have some of those talking skills to to work at these restaurants because i even today i was filling in covering for a bartender so i'm working the bar talking to people using my skills so uh it, they, they come in handy I think we should create a new uh, tour of Orlando called Stranger Things. And we start the bus ride from the airport, go right to the 7-Eleven, and then go over to Tampa to your big bamboo Bayside bar. Go. And on uh, the way, like we stop at Ken's house and he can show us his son's YouTube videos. Or TikTok, <laughs> sorry. You know, I <laughs> think, though, idea. it's bound to fail without a beautiful French girl as you know, the focal <laughs> point. Because you know, we can be honest, all this 80s vibe stuff is great. But one of the reasons why that video has 8 million views is everybody who watches it falls in love with Catherine, uh, like everybody. And I think that's all did. one yeah. of the reasons why it has, you know, that many, I'd say maybe she's only responsible for 7 million of the views out of the 8 million. But I'll I let think her people, know that. I'm I sure think people tune in to, to look at her and ask where she is and ask us if we can please bring her back. By the way, here's some here's some fun fact and trivia. My nickname for her was Fifi Labu. So Fifi was her nickname, by the way. She's gonna kill me for telling you that. But that's <laughs> Pepe Le Pew, Fifi Le Pew, you know, so that's what I really <laughs> I really enjoyed her use of uh the mirror and it's fascinating. A lot of people confuse it for a cell phone, and that was definitely my first thought was she's talking into this, but her character throughout that entire video and her just ability to like be cute and giggly. I can, I can see exactly why she, she holds a percentage. It makes sense. We want, we want to add her into the stranger things mix when we, when we create that tour. So we definitely all had eighties clothes on. She was wearing her denim jacket. And, uh, <laughs> Jake had his popped collar and uh, you know, we had the prices that were the eighties. Everybody comments on those in the section. Uh, uh, we even talk about them. So like 59 cents. Yeah. Uh, where did that last 10 cents go? And but uh, the smoking of the cigarette inside the 7 Eleven is a big uh, surprise to the younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole smoking indoors at all that people did that. And by uh, the way, that, the toothpaste is still across from the candy aisle. I just checked it out. I was just oh, really? <laughs> That's not good. Well, some things that 7 Elevens don't change. Good. Well, I, I did do some research on the prices. My big gulp wasn't 59 cents, it was. Two nine one ninety nine. So oh, yeah. some things do change. Yeah. Well, when I started at Disney, I, I don't know if your are your viewers. Your viewers are just listening, right? They're not going to see this. Some no, those, Oh, yeah. So when I started at Disney, fun fact and trivia, I was making three dollars and eighty one cents an hour in nineteen eighty two. So that'll make you feel better. And I started right here on Main Street in front of that castle selling balloons, and the balloons are seventy five cents. Centente cinco centavos. Uh, and now they're over $15. So some are $20. So just to give you a little price comparison between the 80s and uh, 
2024. Yeah. yeah the the price of air has shot up dramatically. <laughs> and the fact that when we drank water, we didn't have to buy it and bottle it. So air's yeah. next, Ken. <laughs> 100%. We used to drink out of the hose at Disney, right? You just went over to Cinderella's Castle, turned on the hose, drink from the spigot. We drank from the the moat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yikes. It was a nickel, and we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we sang It's a Small World. There you go. Right. Yeah, and then the other big difference is that Slurpees, if you go to any 7-Eleven now, you can't get, uh, you, could just, you have to do the Slurpees yourself. You can't have the cashier lady make it for you. And uh, the cigarettes are uh, behind the counter. But in that video, they weren't. They were on an aisle over by the window. And I think that was common, too. So they flip-flopped the Slurpees with the cigarettes. So it's a, it's a big difference. There's a and tie there, I think. Stranger Things. There's a tie there. For you. Sorry, Ken, I stepped over you. Say that again. There's still a debate which one is less healthy for you, the cigarette or the Slurpee. <laughs> We've got our crack team of researchers working on that. And you know, 10 years from when we reunite again, we should have that research figured out. I love either it. Way, we'll either way, the Tartar Control toothpaste will help you at the end. We're very yeah, conscious the of here. By the way, I, I, I did use vulgar language in there because I grabbed a box and I went to do this. This Tartar Control, this is light shit. It was empty. Somebody had stolen the toothpaste out of it. It was just, a, they put the box back. So I apologize for the vulgar language and your uh you was PG oh, before we'll I keep it out later. Some point oh, we'll that's true. Out. I, believe, I, I believe he just used the word again. <laughs> Darn it. Bleep. Bleep. Oh, forgive you here, sir. We are definitely a bunch of sailors. A bunch of sailors. <laughs> We're so grateful to have you, gentlemen. And you know, I guess just to, you know, kind of close up or some final thoughts. Um you know, what would you say to anyone listening, uh, anyone who wants to get curious about exploring the 80s or anyone who wants to reach out and find you? Would anyone like to share okay, either uh, the, the websites, the YouTubes? Again, we're going to list it in our links below, by the way. Um, or anything about the 80s that you kind of say, hey, if you're interested in the 80s, I recommend the Goldbergs, right? You know, recommend Stranger uh, Things, recommend Disney. <laughs> I mean, I... Uh... Just going back to watch some of the, if you if you like the 80s, there's a lot of those Rat Pack movies back then. Uh, I don't know if there's anything new today that I would direct you to. The Stranger Things would probably be the thing to pop to mind. But there's a lot of good movies that came out then that I, I st think still hold up today. Uh, the Sure Thing, uh, uh, Better Off Dead and things like that. That uh, even, uh, and, uh, Breakfast Club and St. Almost Fire and all that stuff. But uh, it's a, there's, the 80s turned out a lot of good stuff that still people talk about today the music was great at that time the movies were great at that time and there's still good stuff coming out now but i can't think of another generation that uh, maybe the 50s or it symbolizes that time period and they're still good you'd still watch them and you still get the good message without it, it there's little things that, that will date you but the, the overall message in the stories still hold up and are good I think so. I think it's I think funny that... that you recommended the sure thing because on Father's Day, just a, a month or so ago, my son said, All right, Dad, it's your day. Pick a movie. And that's what I picked out for him to show him <laughs> the sure thing because it's a, just a perfect uh, romantic comedy from the 80s. Uh, the lines, I can still quote that movie. I hadn't watched it in probably 25, 30 years myself, but I could recite every line. Um, the Breakfast Club. my favorite movie. Yeah. So if, if, you, if you listeners and viewers at home haven't seen the sure thing, Check that out. That was, it's almost that was impossible it. to find. We had to get like a bootleg copy on YouTube to watch because it really? doesn't stream anywhere. But my goodness, what a what a great film! And uh, you know, just uh, you know, you don't have to explore the '80s to to you know find you know this great camaraderie. I just invite people to to socialize, to be themselves. And if you put your genuine self out there, some people are not going to like it, but you're going to find the people who do like it. And then you're going to have a genuine connection. And I think that's what we showed in that video that people can connect for a short time, not knowing that it's going to be, you know, <laughs> cemented in the world forever, but uh, just be <laughs> yourself and explore whatever you want to explore and find the people that love you for who you are and you'll be in good shape. Well said. It's a well good said. message. Mm. And would anyone else like to share, you know, either how we can reach out to you, where to find you, any websites, anything? 
Um, well, just watch the original 7-Eleven video. We have a little blog on there. We have the, the 2014 recap. And uh, I'm trying to get us all together, uh, uh, including maybe flying Catherine in to, to Orlando so we could all get together at that same 7-Eleven. The, the owner, the, the person who currently owns that 7-Eleven is all excited. They, they're they aware of this video. And they mm. I've made contact with them and they keep texting me, when are you guys going to get it? We, we've repainted the place. We're going to send out a press release. We'll put balloons up. Maybe we can make oh. this an event, invite everybody to come out and uh, take part in the next, it's been 10 years. So I'm, I'm down for doing it this year. So Jake. I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> Ken, uh, I'm not too far away from Orlando. I'm down in Tampa, but I could still drive up there and do it. So we're hoping to do another one soon. And uh, we would love to get a hold of anybody else that was in the video and uh, try to talk them into stopping by and doing a quick cameo. It would be fun. I love it. Thank you. How do you gentlemen feel after doing this interview? I feel great. I need an orange Slurpee. <laughs> I love it. I need some tartar control toothpaste. What else could I say? Do the Slurpee well, first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we're grateful to have you. And of course, would anyone like a hug? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Are you at the world premiere? Oh, is that how you do it? <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I do it. <laughs> it's been another magic night in America, and I'm just glad we could all be here to share it. There you go. Yeah. It was such Thank a you pleasure. Both. It was such a pleasure to get to know you, gentlemen. I'm very, Thanks very for grateful. having us. We appreciate it. Yeah, and Beth, I miss you. I'm so grateful to see you. I'm worried this thing is going to cut us off. I'm just letting everyone know that. <laughs> Uh, no, it was nice to see you too, all of you. It was nice to meet all of you and hear and all your stories. Thank you, the viewers and listeners, for joining us at 7-Eleven back in the 80s. When you get back to the present time or wherever you are now, be sure to give us a like and subscribe and check out our website, nurturednerds.com. Look us up on social media and join our free community by emailing nurturednerdsnewbies at gmail.com. Thank you and have a rad night. Ah. <sighs> <Yep. laughs> uh, uh. <laughs>